So reincarnationresearch.com is a group that I'm working with on collecting evidence for reincarnation. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a quick hands up, and if you're embarrassed, just do that, put your hands over your eyes. But how many of you actually believe or suspect uh, that reincarnation is operative in the universe? Raise your hand. Wow. And how many don't know? Raise your hand. You're just kind of agnostic. And how many of you are like definitely not? Oh, wow, okay. So three or four of you are kind of agnostic and the majority of you kind of lean this way. Okay, that's, that's interesting because in most Christian uh, backgrounded uh, cultures, uh, it's kind of like, you know, like I grew up Catholic, you kind of die and then you've got maybe if you've been really good, heaven. <laughs> but if you're not so good, you've got purgatory to work through. And it's not really keen. And I think if you go back and look through some of the bishops' uh, directives and the pope's directives, they're not keen at all at mentioning reincarnation. And if you really dig into it, um, I'll make this brief because it's not meant to be a, a polemic here, but in, uh, I think it was the 1200s or 1100s, the Cathars in South France were reincarnation Catholics, and they were unfortunately hunted down and killed for their beliefs in reincarnation, largely, right? So there's a lot of really uh, cultural overlays to reincarnation. I've only got a few minutes, so this is going to be a pictorial whirlwind tour of evidence for reincarnation or of reincarnation. There's a YouTube video which if you typed in reincarnationresearch.com, you can research this further. I'm a psychologist, but I sit with this reincarnationresearch.com group, and they're basically a nonprofit. Well, he's, he's got .com, but he's basically a nonprofit. And the guy who founded it is this guy, Walter Semkew. He's a physician, and he's been at it for about 25, 30 years now. He actually went to a psychic when he was in his mid-twenties as a medical student studying psychiatry. And the psychic, it was on a whim that he went, said, uh, you know, your background is a great personage in the United States. You helped found the United States. And like, you know, you read these news accounts of people going to psychics or intuitives and being told you were a famous person like Marie Antoinette or King George IV or whatever. And so he just laughed. He just thought, well, this is like nonsense, basically. And he says, Walter, in his book, he's got several out, but this one's called Born Again, the Story of Reincarnation, citing evidence of past lives uh, based on the work of Ian Stevenson. How many have heard of Ian Stevenson, the psychiatrist? Yeah. So Walter is repackaging the work of Ian Stevenson. All right. So what kind of data or what kind of information does the foundation, the Reincarnation Research Foundation, collect? So they're looking at, uh, the, these, these are just mission statements. Uh, he, he's got, Walter has this belief that reincarnation research is coming out now because the planet's in crisis and there's spirit beings who want us to survive. So reincarnation research, he thinks, is a, um, inspiration for us to be more peaceful as a planet. So there's Ian Stevenson. He's deceased now, out of the body, you might say, uh, but he was at University of Virginia. And a lot of people uh, don't know of his work. Um, and to me, he's, he's just a notch up there. I mean, he's up there with Freud and um, Carl Jung in terms of the quality of his case studies. So uh, according to uh, the records, he's got 1,200 what he called validated childhood past life memory cases. So you know, the typical thing for him and his research crew at University of Virginia was to go out and when they found a child who would exhibit um, behaviors that indicated a past life, they would rush out, you know, they would get in their, it's kind of like those people who go out in the United States, I don't know about here, but they get in their car and they go chase tornadoes you know, and they filmed the tornadoes. So he, would, he and his crew would go that, go that far. They would rush out and try to interview the child who's typically between the ages of three and five. And the child would be saying things like, my name's not Jimmy to his parents, my name is 
you know, uh, Frederick von Stoltenberg, you know, and they're like, no, your name's Jimmy. And the kid would basically uh, create problems in the, in the upbringing of his uh, childhood. And sometimes the children would demonstrate, um, uh, the fancy word is xenoglossy, they would demonstrate language abilities that they couldn't have learned. When you're three or four, you don't have time to learn French or German, you know, when you're a three or four year old. And some children also exhibited uh, talents like painting, uh, uh, architectural, uh, mathematical. So genius was also something that would attract Ian Stevenson. So he actually built an international network uh, studying uh, these children. And um, what he found is that uh, the child gives his parents uh, some details of the past life and that the past life family often could be found. So if Jimmy, in this case, was a four-year-old and said, well, actually, you know, across the street there's a German family and I remember this German family down the street, uh, you know, from the 1800s. Um, what uh, Stevenson would try to do is find the genealogy of that family across the street from the 1800s. Or, more importantly, he would try to find a family that's, say, uh, geographically distant in the present day and go to that family and ask that family, well, we have this young child named Jimmy, and he claims to be, you know, the reincarnation of somebody in your family that was born 100 years ago. And we're going to bring Jimmy over, and we want you to pull out some photographs of your family, of your family lineage. And we're going to ask Jimmy what he thinks of your photographs, of your family photographs, of your great-grandfather and your great-great, you know, aunt and your great, you know, whatever. And um, what Stevenson found a lot is that these kids who showed this kind of uh, memory, uh, reincarnative memory, could, uh, you know, describe who was in the photograph from 100 years ago or pick out stories or tell of uh, anecdotes of that family from 100, 200, 300 years ago. Um, so uh, he made a point of visiting other countries, that is Ian Stevenson, because other countries were more open to reincarnation. So he actually traveled the world in a 40-year career and gathered literally 2,500 cases. Uh, and then of those 2,500 cases, he would subject them as, um, let's see, John, you were, John Dixon, you were doing the thing with the sensed versus the observable. He would submit these cases to both his analysis and other uh, experts' analysis about whether they fit criteria for what a valid case of reincarnation would be. Is that two minutes? OK. So here's the real quick uh, uh, findings that he found, um, that there is, in many of these cases, physical resemblance from one lifetime to another, that birthmarks from past wounds would appear in the child or would be present in the child at birth, and that these wounds related to some personage you know, 100, 200, 300 years ago who died of some kind of wound. And the birthmarks generally matched up with wounds. And he could do that because in many cases, if they weren't too old, he could get autopsy reports. So as a physician, Ian Stevenson had access to autopsy reports. So he could compare the child's birthmark to actual cases of autopsies from you know, 50 or 30 years ago. Uh, he found that phobias were often related uh, to the kind of death that the earlier, I'll just say the ancestor personage or the ancestor persona had. Um, and that he found that souls together reincarnate in groups. Uh, he found that talents like unexplained bouts of genius that I'd mentioned can persist from one lifetime to another and that xenoglossy, which is the ability to speak a language that could not have been learned in this lifetime, remains intact with the soul from incarnation to incarnation. Uh, there's some other really bizarre stuff that I find bizarre, that a soul can animate more than one body at a time, and that gender changes 
uh, can occur and might account for some present people's uh, issues ha they have with homosexuality. Here's some examples of where he had photos. So here's on the left, Hannah Mansour from 1920, who died of a heart ailment. And in 1960 or so, this lady named Suzanne Ghanem was born. And she was one of these children who could relate the exact uh, social situation of Hanan Mansur. That is, she would visit the Mansur's children, who are now adults, and find out and name who their father was, who their mother was, the kinds of issues like the fights, the, the conflicts, the family dynamics that were present in Hanan Mansur's families. So um, he noticed that is uh, Walter Semkew, who's the guy, not Stevenson, but Walter is the current uh, promoter of Stevenson's work, uh, found that there's facial similarities. So Walter's big thing is that there are facial similarities from lifetime to lifetime. So I'll just show you some more of these. Now this one's hard to see, but this was another family, Daniel Jurdy who as a child in the early 70s had detailed memories of being a previous being named Rashid Kadadeh in a past life. And the Kadadeh family now accepts Daniel, that is that older gentleman there, as the reincarnation of Rashid. Rashid is the uh, photo. Stevenson revisited Daniel in 1998 and found, uh, you can't see it in this, but he found that um, Daniel has the same facial, what he calls architecture, as Rashid. Now, Stevenson went to all kinds of places. He went overseas. He went to Burma. He went to Cambodia. And he found that, in this case, that uh, uh, two sisters, these are the elderly people, um, the older women you see in panels one and three, he found that he believed what he termed the reincarnated uh, souls uh, for uh, their names San and Nuyat. And he goes thoroughly through this book called Born Again, and he, he Stevenson mentions, and Walter mentions, how the uh, children uh, have the same personality and food preferences as the earlier generation that uh, supposedly reincarnated. Um, his point there is that cases uh, reincarnate uh, in groups to work out issues. So, uh, yeah, this just says that in many cases of twins that they have uh, previous histories together, and he's citing some statistics there that for siblings, uh, past life relationships for twins, there seem to be in previous lives 35% of the time siblings and 29% of the time friends. So when twins are born in the present day, there's probable a, a lineage, a history of reincarnations where they've been together before. This is a famous case uh, of a guy named James Leninger, who, uh, on the right there, who, when he was four or five, could relate uh, evidence that he knew and participated in the battle as an airline pilot, uh, not a jet fighter pilot. They didn't have jets in 1943 or Battle of Midway. They had uh, prop planes. But he had a memory, as a four-year-old, of being shot down by the Japanese over Iwo Jima. And he could cite, as a four-year-old, his name back then, he could name the ship, the Natoma Bay, and he could name the circumstances of, of, as, as to how he was shot down. And Stevenson went back to the now old, uh, present-day uh, admiral, admiralty and military people and said, is this true? Did you get, lose a guy named James Houston back in 1943 during the Battle of Midway? And, they said yes, and the guy's name was James, so su not so surprisingly, according to Walter, this present incarnation is also named James. So the surviving sister of James Houston, the guy on the left who was originally shot down over Midway, the surviving sister of James Houston accepts that James Leninger, the guy on the right, is the reincarnation of the earlier James Houston. And what Stevenson did was again and again, he went back to the original families of the prior incarnation and said, could this kid 
be making this up? Did this kid have any prior connection with you? Did this kid learn from a book about the earlier incarnation? And the family's like, no. There was nothing written about James Houston in any book. So um, this book I brought, it's called Born Again, or uh, the story of reincarnation cases involving evidence of past lives. And he goes through and he cites, you know, maybe 15 cases, and he uses photographs. So for those of you who are visual, uh, he inverts the photos so that you can not be swayed by the top photo, but just see the traits. If you invert a photo, you'll be able to look at the nose for what it is, the mouth for what it is, and the facial architecture for what it is, without kind of getting uh, muddied by the um, upright photos. So it's kind of an interesting way of doing it. Um, and his book, Origin of the Soul, talks about the reasons for reincarnation and gives a framework. So uh, um, uh, Tony today gave a talk about different frameworks or approaches. I think the, the uh, association here, uh, the society should look at uh, reincarnation frameworks as expressed in Born Again and Origin of the Soul as a way to look at reasons why there might be not so much poltergeist, but why mediums are transmitting information. Because apparently, according to Walter and maybe to Stevenson's thinking, souls or spirits want to educate us. And the easiest, fastest way to do that is through other bodies, other incarnated bodies. And that's why we have mediums. They're a source of information. They're a source of teaching. Thank you. Thank you.